Affinity Photo allows you to duplicate linked versions of layers, but you can also link attributes together between different types of layers as well. I'll show you a few examples of this functionality. I have a composition made up of multiple layers which are masked. I want to alter the white balance of the foreground and background, but these two layers are separated in the layer stack by some other layers that make up part of the composition. This means I cannot simply group the layers together and then apply a white balance adjustment to that group. Instead then, let me add a white balance adjustment and clip it into the foreground layer. I'll move the sliders and at the moment we can see only the foreground is being affected. The background terrain detail is not changing. I'll just expand the foreground layer so we can see the white balance adjustment. And now I'll go to Layer, Duplicate Linked. Notice that the two white balance adjustment layers now have a link icon. I can drag one of these layers and clip it into the background layer. Now if I modify the parameters on this dialog, both adjustments will change simultaneously. So I'm now able to affect both the foreground and background at the same time. To take this further, we might want to keep the white balance parameters, but change other attributes between the layers. For this, we can use the links panel. We can access this panel either by going to Window, Links, or by clicking on one of the link icons here. On this panel, we can choose to unlink certain attributes. I'll unlink Opacity and Visibility. Now, let's say I was to change the White Balance Adjustment Layer's Blend Mode to Screen. This produces an interesting brightening effect in the background, but it's too strong in the foreground. However, because I've unlinked Opacity, I can now change the Opacity of the White Balance Adjustment clipped into the foreground layer, whilst retaining the look I want for the background layer so I've adjusted the relative opacity of one layer, but maintained the link between the layers in all other attributes, meaning I am free to experiment further with the blend mode, and of course, the white balance parameters. Let's look at another example of how we can use linked layers to our advantage. Here I have a cutout that I want to duplicate and position over on the right hand side. I'll use Duplicate Linked, hold Shift, move this layer across, right click, go to Transform, Flip Horizontal, and then position this cutout into place over on the right. I'll just open up the Links panel again, and you can see that Transform is not linked by default. So you can employ scaling, rotating, flipping, flopping, and shearing separately. Opacity is linked, however, so I can bring the layer opacity down slightly on both layers at once for a slight matte look and to blend through the background texture. Pixel content is also linked, and here's a great use for it. I'll make sure I've got the right-hand silhouette selected and move into the Liquify persona. I'll push the hair around slightly, as well as the forehead and the chin. At first glance, the layers do not appear to be linked, but once I commit the liquify operation, I'll see the changes occur in the other linked layer. You can also link existing layers without having to specifically use the duplicate linked operation. This is sometimes more efficient if you only want to link one particular attribute. For example, if I select the pen tool with P and I draw out a quick shape here, then give it a black fill, I might then duplicate this and rotate and reposition it. And I'll just select both together and move them to a more central position. Now, if I enable the links panel, and select just one of these layers, I can drag the other layer onto one of these target icons. For example, Vector Curves, then release the mouse button. This will link the Vector Curves attribute between both layers. 
So now, if I use P twice to switch across to the node tool and start changing the individual nodes, this change will now occur on both layers simultaneously. I could also move them closer together by lasso selecting the two bottom nodes, then click dragging them. Furthermore, I can also drag the second layer onto the transform option on the links panel. And now if I transform one layer, they will be transformed together. Here is another example where I can show you that you can link attributes of more than two layers together. In this composition, I've got two mist layers, then a foreground tone layer up here, and also an ambient occlusion render pass, which is adding some depth to the render. I may want to link the opacity between these four layers. To do that, I'll need the links panel active. Don't forget that if you haven't previously been using linked layers, you can get to the panel by going to Window and Links. Now, as we saw in the previous example, the way to link attributes is to have one of the layers selected that you want to link. This layer will take on the attributes of whichever layer it is linked to. So I'll select the mist layer first, then I'll drag the mist inverted layer onto the opacity and visibility option. These layers are now linked, but I want to add a third and a fourth. To achieve this, I need to select the layer that I want to add to this link chain. So I'll select foreground tone, then I can drag one of the existing linked layers, such as mist inverted, onto the opacity and visibility option. I'll do it again for the fourth layer, the ambient occlusion pass. So I could now drag foreground tone onto opacity and visibility. Now we can click the left and right arrow icons to cycle between layers which have this attribute linked. And of course, I can now change the opacity which is linked between these four layers. So I will get some interesting visual feedback as I do this. However, because the other attributes are not linked, I am free to change the blend mode on one layer without it affecting the others. For the bottom mist layer, I could set the blend mode to screen, for example, to brighten the sky slightly. For my final example, I will point out that you can also assign a shortcut to the duplicate linked command, which can save time if you end up using this feature frequently. To do this, I'll go to Preferences. On Mac, you can access this via the App Title menu, whereas on Windows, you will find it under the Edit menu. I'll go to the Shortcuts category, and on the second drop down, I'll choose Layer. Then I'll scroll down, find Duplicate Linked, and assign it to Option Shift L. Then I'll close the Preferences dialog. In this document, I'm now going to use that shortcut to duplicate another three linked versions of this triangle. So I'll use that shortcut, Option Shift L, three times. Now I will unlink opacity and visibility for these layers. And I'll just hide the top two for now. With the bottom triangle layer selected, I'll unlink layer effect parameters. Then I'll go to Window, Quick FX to access layer effects, and I'll drag Gaussian Blur up to 100 pixels. This will give the triangle a nice blurred outline. With the third triangle, which I'll now show, I might unlink blending mode and ranges. Then change the blend mode to glow and drop the opacity down to around 30%. And with the fourth triangle, which again I will now show, I will unlink blending mode and ranges and layer effect parameters. On the quick effects panel, I'll bring the Gaussian blur radius up to 100 pixels. Then I'll change the blend mode to multiply. So despite unlinking various parameters to really customize this triangle effect, the vector content is still linked. So for example, I could long click and select the triangle tool 
then modify the top point on the context toolbar. Because the triangle has been rotated upside down, it's actually the bottom node point that is being affected. But this attribute remains linked for all four copies of the triangle layer. I can, of course, also change the fill color. So I can experiment with different options here before perhaps returning to a purple fill. Finally, on the links panel, I still have blending mode and ranges linked between the two bottom triangle layers. So this allows me to quickly experiment with a different blend mode for both layers simultaneously, like negation, for example. And there we go. Several different examples of how you might use linked layers in Affinity Photo. This video only really scratches the surface of what is possible with this feature, so it is certainly worth experimenting with in order to find unique benefits for your own workflows. Thank you for watching.